The following program is being brought to you on the Seventh Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit SeventhWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome. You've entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simran Singh. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Learn to empower yourself, broaden your mind, open your heart, and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simran Singh. Over the past two decades, modern Kirtan master Jai Utal has released a series of stellar albums offering a unique mix of devotional chant, world music, folk, funk, and more. Utal's latest, Thunder Love, with its generous serving of irresistible Brazilian rhythms and a pinch of country blues, is his most fully realized work since Mondo Rama. I'd like to welcome this fusion master of global sound to 1111 Talk Radio. Welcome, Jai. Uh, thank you, Simon. Great to be here. You know, you have some really amazing music, and you have blazed a trail to me through the whole music industry with this mix, as well as with the yoga industry and so many other places that your music is heard and and uh, just revered. Tell me how you got started. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a long, long time ago. <laughs> I, I was raised in a very musical family, and... and uh, I started learning Western classical music. I guess I was like seven. I was I was learning the piano. My my father was in the rock and roll business, and he he um, owned a series of record companies. So, you know, every week he brought home the top top forty hits of the day. So I was immersed in that, and, and as well as studying piano. But it wasn't until I guess I was somewhere in my early teens that I found my first real love, which was uh, Appalachian-style banjo. So I got deep into that. Then, you know, later got into psychedelic music, and then somewhere along the line discovered Indian music. And, gosh, it's a long, 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 long story since then, but it seemed, it seems like all the, the, the different music, not, that, not just that I was exposed to, but that I really, really loved, it seems like it all mixed up inside of me and it's become my musical expression as well, I guess I could say, as well as my spiritual journey. And that's really interesting because being exposed to more of the rock and roll and, and, and what you do to me is very unique and it's very multicultural and such a mix of beautiful sounds that your ear really lent itself in a different direction than probably what you were hearing that was coming home. Well, yeah, for sure. What, what was coming home was, was the mainstream. But, um, you know, in the 60s and early 70s, the mainstream music was still pretty cool and, and still pretty um, full of energy in a way that, you know, I won't... It's not quite so full of energy these days. But, yeah, you know, I was, since I was also deeply exposed to other stuff from very young, particularly particularly Indian music and the great masters of Indian music... It, it it provided a balance from the uh, mainstream rock and roll and R&B music that my dad was bringing home. I met Ali Akbar Khan in 1969. I, I had been listening to his records, um, you know, for for some years before that. But I met him in Oregon when I went to college, and and very very quickly dropped out of my college and came down to the Bay Area to study with him. And I can't even begin to to say how much uh, he and his music and his being has influenced my life. I'm very sad to say that he died last week, two weeks ago. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, it's a big, big uh, space of emptiness that, um, where he had, you know, for 40 years he was my teacher. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and, and 
he's the one, I know based just on the interview that we did in 1111 Magazine with you, he really helped you tap into your voice, your sound. That was a really important part of your journey. Well, he insisted. You know, um, when I went to his school, uh, at first I was studying instrumental music. I was studying his instrument, which is called the Sarod. It's a 25-stringed instrument. But he insisted that everyone who studies at his school with him had to study vocal music and had to really pay attention to singing because he believed that all the, that all of Indian music derived from vocal music. And, um, you know, I, I really feel that not just Indian music, but all, all the great strains of... The, you know, the first instrument was the voice. The voice and drums, I guess you could say, um, and that that um, training was, gosh, it was just so uh, unbelievably important to me because I would never have done it. You know, like many of us, I was very, very shy of singing. I was very uh, insecure about singing. You know, I just I couldn't even deal with the thought of singing. <laughs> um, but uh, Kansab is what we call them, he insisted that we sing. And he, he insisted that we work on it and, and that we practice it and that we get into it. And, and so then, just kind of out of the blue, I, ha- I started to have these amazing, um, wonderful experiences singing, you know, alone in my room practicing, but just like this, this sense of, of completeness and f- fullness and wholeness and emotion that... that um, was way beyond anything I had felt from playing any from playing instruments, even though I love instruments, you know. Well, and that to me is is really one of the parts that I enjoy most is your singing, and so I can't imagine, you know, the world without your voice in it. Just because I have so many of your CDs and and I really love your voice. You talk about Thunder Love being the opening up to love finally, and that's something I'd like to get very deeply into because I think your journey. Uh, probably mirrors a lot of people's journeys in, in terms of what they have to face. But before we do that, I'd love to share with our audience a, s- a short clip of one of your songs from the Thunder Love CD, which is available at jayutal.com, J-A-I-U-T-T-A-L.com. And this song is track one on that CD, and it's Bhavani Shankara. In the blackness of the night, your light shines on me, guiding me into the cave, the river of dreams, where the mystery worlds of fear and sadness beckon, or to lose myself in that ocean again. Where have you gone? I'm lost without your touch. Wrap me in your arms. And the Sanskrit and the Hindi was a bit of a um, um, well. It was a bit of a leap, you know. I'd never done that before, and I, I love it, you know, because both those sides are very real to me. English is my language of, of speaking and thinking, and Sanskrit is my language of prayer and meditation. And you mix the two, and you do a lot of kirtan and and different kirtan trainings as well, and. Yes. 
and and that's really the essence of that. Yeah, the the kirtan is something that I've been doing, gosh, since the mid '60s. Uh, not professionally, you know. Uh, whoever dreamed that you could do kirtan professionally? <laughs> but but uh, as as a real deep part of my um, personal practice of you know of connection, of meditation, of, of prayer, and so. You know, I, I've done a couple of CDs that are just kirtan, but mixing them now with with these songs in English, I don't know. It's really a reflection of who I am. I have no idea if anyone else can relate to it or if, or if anyone else will relate to it. But, it, you know, it's really so real to me. Well, I think it brings it so much more to the generations of today. You know, I grew up hearing kirtan in the house and grandparents and great-grandparents, and it was revered in the way that they chanted it, but yeah. this is a whole different reverence. This is just, it, this really brings it into uh, an even deeper level of the soul and the body gets involved, and it's just, there's a lot that goes on, I think, when you really allow yourself to hear the words and understand uh, the rhythms that are going alongside of that. Yeah, there's a lot of, as you said in the beginning, there's a lot of Brazilian influences in this album, and, and I guess I can attribute that to my wife, <laughs> who is Brazilian. And we've been together about nine years or something like that, and, and she has just been uh, introducing me to so much beautiful music over all these years that, you know, music that I had no idea of, I'd never heard of. Up here we know a little bit about Bossa Nova, you know a little bit of some, some idea about samba, but, but Brazilian music is so rich, and so deep, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to, to mix that with the Indian and to mix that with all the other stuff. What's really neat about it is you seem to not just take something or hear something and be a part of it. You literally integrate it into a part of you and kind of make it who you are. And that's the side that many people have a challenge of sharing is really taking something that's outside of them at first and making it part of who they are. And you do that with the Brazilian, with the Indian, with the different elements that you bring to your music. Yeah, I, I, thank you for saying that. I, and it's true. And, you know, um, of course, the Indian music, I studied so much and so deeply and continue to and um, still consider myself pretty much of a beginner, you know. But but it's it's not like a, a dilettante kind of interest. It's been really my, a life interest. And Brazilian music, well, I married it. <laughs> <laughs> I am here today with Jai Utal, a true pioneer in the world music community. You can find his CD, his latest, Thunder Love, at jaiutal.com, J-A-I-U-T-T-A-L.com. And if you're interested in learning Kirtan, he hosts a summer Kirtan camp. The next one is August 14th, and you can find out about that on his website as well. It's a week-long, in-depth immersion into Kirtan. Join me back in just a few minutes, and we'll speak a little bit more to Jai Utal. Your online community for positive change. Seventh Wave Network. We all want peace. We all desire a more meaningful life. We work hard to achieve these things, but at what avail? The key is authentic living with Andrea Matthews. Andrea will interview some of the great spiritual experts of today and will provide wisdom to help you raise your consciousness to the level of your own I am. Your authenticity can give you miraculous gifts, but you have to know how to get there. Listen for Authentic Living with Andrea Matthews. Heard live every Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time on the 7th Wave Network. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset. 
Discovering the Heart and Stepping into Conscious Living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Mom? Dad? How long should I wait for you? Mom? If I'm at soccer practice. What if something happens? Will you come get me? There's no reason not to have a plan in case of a terrorist attack. Mom, if you're not home, should we go to the neighbor's house? And some extremely good reasons why you should. Can you tell me? Everybody should have a plan. Take five minutes to talk about where you'll meet and how you'll get in touch with each other in an emergency. For other things you can do to be prepared, visit www.ready.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Ad Council. The new home for visionary positive change. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Love can take many forms, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual among them. Each can stand alone in a beautiful way, but when a myriad types of love entwine, truly revelatory things can occur, as they do throughout Thunder Love, the long-awaited new album by world music voyager Jai Utal. He is with me today on 1111 Talk Radio. And Jai, I'd like to go a little bit more into where Thunder Love came from, and I know that this is a, an album opening up to love finally is what you say. Yeah. What was that huge part that you were letting go of to be able to have this birth through you? Well... You know, I guess it's I guess it's the subtle and not so subtle belief that that I am not lovable. I guess to put it in a very simple way, you know that that love that there's, you know, how could anyone love me? It's a, it's it's like a self it's a self hatred kind of expression, you know, that that many of us have, and that can filter through so many aspects of our life. Um, um, and, you know, in, in many ways, you could control our life without us even knowing it. So that being said, uh, I, I have been struggling with that, working with that um, for so, so, so many years. And, and But over the last, say, I don't know, can I say like four or five or six years or seven years, maybe even a little bit more, uh, different things happened to me that, that made me slowly awaken to the, to the fact that this that the universe, the love from the universe, was so ever present and so so non judgmental and so just loving, you know, so just so nurturing, and that really it was me holding it at bay for all those years. I, I really honor the authenticity with which you speak, and I got that when we did the magazine article as well, because it takes a tremendous amount of courage to admit those words. And ironically, it's what each and every human being does suffer with, whether it's at a conscious or subconscious level. So I really honor that you share that. How did you get from that place of recognizing the unlovableness and finding that for yourself? Well, well... Starting some time ago, I, I have to say that I met my guru in 1971, and so his presence has constantly been there kind of challenging that belief, but yet the belief, the negative belief, still persisted with the aid of alcohol, with the aid of drugs, and mostly with the aid of just um, creating a life that reinforced it, reinforces those negative thoughts. Anyway... Um, I guess it was about nine years ago, I, I met the woman who is now my wife, Nubia Teixeira, and, gosh, for the first time I started to feel that a human being loved me no, no matter what, you know, unconditionally. Can I say that? Can a human being love another one unconditionally? Maybe, maybe only God can love us completely uncondition, unconditionally. But this human being was getting close to it, 
and and I felt like, oh my God, I want to, I don't want to block this. I want to feel it. And and the 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 process of coming together with her, you know, it wasn't immediate. I had a bunch of stuff in my own life that needed to be cleared cleared up and cleaned up. But that was that was the first thing. And then and then like maybe two or three years after we were together, I was diagnosed with kidney cancer. And, you know, this is like, wow, oh, my goodness gracious. First time in my life I really feel I'm loved and I'm loving and I'm in love and that it feels, like, real and suddenly I'm going to die of kidney cancer. Oh, boy. You know, it, it, it puts a lot of, <laughs> it, it stirs up the pot, shall we say. Um, anyway, a bunch of different things happened in relationship to my guru in India, and um, uh, well, I went into the surgery thinking that I had cancer and they were going to take out my kidney. They, they, I had the surgery and it turned out it wasn't cancer, and um, and in that process, I felt so much love coming to me from every level of my awareness from, you know, people that I barely knew to, to my ancestors to certainly my wife and certainly my teachers in India. And I was just like, oh, my God, I'm so cared for. I'm so cared for to the extent that this thing that was cancer turned into not cancer. And sometimes it takes those big catharses to really change those deep internal patterns. We have to have those situations arise to not just accept the love from others, but to start to really say, first I need to give it to me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And 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 then the last thing that happened, um, you know, of course, this is not like exactly just events. It's all a gradual thing, as you can imagine. But four years ago, we had a little baby and, and a little boy. And, you know, I'm 58. I, I never thought and never wanted to have a child. I thought, you know... Why would I bring a child into this world, and who, and how could I possibly raise a child into a life of light and beauty? You know, uh, I know this is very contrary to what many people's image of me has been, but these are my, these were my thoughts, you know. And but lo and behold, this being of light came out of Nubia's body, and and you know, many parents will also say this. So I'm not saying that I'm unique, but I had never experienced that kind of love, and I had never experienced that kind of love being reciprocated, and and I had never experienced the being of this uh, uh, um, cosmic, cosmic beauty um, looking to me with so much love and uh, devotion and, you know... And again, I honor the authenticity with which you speak because so many people uh, have trouble voicing what their truth is. And I think you say that not only in your words, but in actually one of my favorite songs on the Thunder Love CD, which is track three, Down on My Knees. So I think we should listen to that a little bit right now. Okay. Down on My Knees, Thunder Love CD. Uh, which you can get at jayutal.com, J-A-I-U-T-T-A-L.com. Time has reversed the acts of the play. The land talks in verse, but I don't know what it's trying to say. And I'm down on my knees, cries for freedom, I'm down on my knees. For freedom, begging for freedom. Oh, Nama Shivaya, Nama Shivaya. Oh, Nama Shivaya, Nama Shivaya. station with two lights on behind 
the blue one, it was my soul, and the red one was my mind. And I'm down on my knees, crying for freedom. I'm down on my knees, begging for freedom, begging for freedom. Oh. That is my absolute favorite song on the whole CD, and I think it touched me so deeply because I've been at that place before, and I could see how someone could write a song being at that place. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard one to even verbalize. I'm down on my knees begging for freedom. But I think so many of us know that feeling, and freedom comes to us in you know so many different ways. But that desperation is, oh, boy... <laughs> I feel it when I'm listening to the song. <laughs> <laughs> how, how does it feel when you're writing a song like that? Or you, you must be so in your heart at that point that that's all that you're not even really thinking. It's just pouring out of you. It, yeah, it is. Well, you, uh, hmm. When I'm writing songs, I don't know, how do I put this? Uh, often the music of a song comes out just just like it falls right out of me. And then the... the seed of the lyrics falls out of me without thinking at all. Um, so in that way, that did. But, but then, you know, a lot of times, uh, like getting chorus, uh, verse number two, verse number three, I, it doesn't always, that part doesn't always come so easily. But yeah, that, that's the chorus part. I'm down on my knees begging for freedom. Om Namah Shivaya. That came in a minute. And then now, after the CD has been released and listening to the song, do you get the same feeling? Is it a different feeling? Is it more expanded? What happens listening to your song? I, I got all shivery just then listening to it. <laughs> right. Of course, I am an artist so that, you know, uh, uh, often I listen to my own music and I just feel like, oh, my God, I should have done that. That's wrong. I made a mistake there. How did I let that one go by? You know, um, we're so self-critical. Well, and that's the thing, because most people, uh, if they go to your website and look at you, if they've seen you in magazine articles or on covers of CDs, you know, you're a, a very handsome gentleman, you've got great Thank talent, you. you've got so much going on, that it would be difficult for many to believe, well, how, why doesn't he love himself? But it's such a personal place that we all come from, and it, and it comes from our experiences of the past. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about that with Jai Utal, who is visiting with us today on 1111 Talk Radio. Thunder Love, his latest release in many ways, is a sonic approximation of darkness giving way to the dawn. In its depiction of the first rays of a new rising sun, there's an acknowledgement of the shadows that came before, shadows that Utal addresses with bold directness. Join me in a few minutes, and we'll speak a little bit more with Jai. Be Extraordinary. Seventh Wave Network. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Are you looking for Life's Balance? Look no further than 7th Wave Network. We're bringing you Life's Balance with Shaman M. Let Melody McBride take you on a unique listening experience. You'll explore the world of alternative health. Learn about the many facets of healing. Preventative lifestyles from children to seniors will be discussed on the show. Listen for Life's Balance with Shaman M. Broadcast live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time on 7th Wave Network. It's the healthy side of life. Let peace and balance be yours. 
And the results indicate your child has neuroblastoma. There's evidence of metastasis. We need to schedule a bone We'll need to perform a surgery. Urinary biopsy. VMA detection MIBG is scan. Scan. After you hear your child has cancer, chances are you don't hear anything else. CureSearch.org connects you to the most comprehensive research and advice on childhood cancer and to other families who know exactly what you're going through. CureSearch.org. You're not as alone as you feel. Brought to you by CureSearch and the Ad Council. Listening on a higher dimension. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Jai Utah, fusion master of global sound, has cut a serpentine swath through the musical world over a course of a recording career that spanned more than two decades with treks into multicultural world music, avant-garde jazz, electronic rock, and traditional Indian kirtan. Sacred chants have become a staple in the yoga practicing community. You are very revered in the yoga community, and uh, so much of your music is used in studios in, in, to assist in teaching. Yeah, it's nice to know that. Whenever I go to a yoga class, I usually hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> that must be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it depends how much you know pain I'm feeling in the asana. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Most definitely. So you just returned from India. Yes. And tell me, was that a trip that you took? Is that um, generally to connect back to uh, some of the sounds? Is it something that's more of uh, a fun trip or a work trip? What happens? When well, you... it wasn't a work trip, but it was it was uh, a fun and a nurturing and a reconnection. I, I went to, with my family to my guru's ashram up in the Himalayas and. Um, we were just there for three weeks and uh, not doing much, you know. Played around a lot with, the, you know, in the in the woods by the river with my little boy, and then went to the temple and, and sat and sang and prayed and and uh, you know reconnected that deep, deep heart place. It was a wonderful trip. We had such a beautiful time. Oh, wonderful! Now. A lot of people have a misconception or or don't really have a, a perception about what a guru is or what a guru can be. For you, what has that been? Uh, for me, well, for, well, I should say that one thing for me it's 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 something that's constantly unfolding. E- every time I think I have an idea of what the guru disciple relationship means. Well, the next day, that idea is blown out of the water, and I have a new idea. Because I think it, it exists outside of the, the rational mind, um, I feel that my guru has been my protector, my... my uh, he's just taking care of me on every level for God knows how many lifetimes. You know, life after life after life after life after life. Just protected me, guided me, brought me slowly, slowly... To, to the place of light. Um, and, of course, God only knows how many more lifetimes to go, but I feel safe in, in his arms. And I, I know that you said earlier in the show, and my condolences, um, that actually Ali Akbar Khan, your, your very first uh, teacher, uh, has passed a couple of weeks ago on to a higher realm. And with yeah, I, that happening... What what's the next step for you? How do you remain connected to that guru? Well, yeah, Al Akbar Khan. I guess I would I would definitely say that he's my musical guru, and um, and he's been you know like a, a surrogate father and a very 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 close elder in my life. Um, well, what happens next is really just a continuation as well of 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 trying to. Who endeavoring to to always create music that's that's deeper, closer to my essence, that's closer to my core expression, that's more. Um, uh, oh, what's the 
were just more done with more deep spiritual intention because that's what Eric Rakan always gave to me and always he gave to all of his thousands and thousands and thousands of students was that consciousness that music is not something frivolous, that music is the deepest connection to the spirit. So, you know, he's not here, um, but that doesn't change my own inner direction and inner intention to keep staying close to that teaching. And I think that's what a lot of people tend to misconstrue about a guru is not so much that they're leading you or pushing you or sending you in a direction as much as you're connecting to your inner core in a deeper way with guidance or friendship or the love of another person. Yeah, my, my, my spiritual master, my spiritual guru, Neem Karoli Baba, um, you know, I, 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 in a way, I feel like he does totally live inside of me. Um, but, you know, I forget that so much of the time that it's even hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of what the, what the journey is, to, to remember what we actually know and to remember it every day. another one of your songs that I just truly love, Jai, off of the Thunder Love CD. Do you have a favorite? Well, it changes, you know, from moment to moment. I, I have favorite sections, I guess. Uh, Down on My Knees is one of my favorites. Uh, Bhavani Shankar is really up there. The, the, the end section, the Samba Kirtan and Bola Ram is one of my favorites ever of anything. Um, I love it, and right before, at the beginning, I've never felt this love when my little boy says, I love you, Daddy. That's probably my favorite moment in, in life. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I have a lot of favorites. And with your child now, do you, how do you ban- balance you know, having the wife and having this beautiful new child that is really probably um, the most meaningful thing in your life at this point? How do you balance your career and the busyness of all the traveling you do and creating? Well, truly it's hard, you know, and and I think that's a struggle that every parent who has a, a, you know, a career in the arts and and of some sort has to to find it. You know, I don't don't necessarily feel like I balance it that well. It's a, it's a, you know, one day at a time we try to figure it out. Sometimes I feel like I'm not giving enough to my child, and sometimes I feel like I'm not giving enough to my wife, and sometimes I feel like I'm not giving enough to myself. And other times it all feels right. So it's a work in progress, you know. And what do you do for yourself? I mean, I would think that music is such a love and such a recreation, but it's also your work. So what do you do outside of that? Well, really, music is my recreation as well as my work. So, you know, 
being in the studio or being performing, that's one thing. But when I'm home, I love and need to have a little time every day just to sit with an instrument and play and sing and kind of, as my little boy says, to, to day, to day think. He says, I'm not daydreaming, I'm day thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I, you know, I love to take walks. I love to be on the beach. Um, and I love to just play around with my family, you know, just to just play. You know, to play, it's like a funny thing. Before, you're, before I was a daddy, I didn't really have that concept of, like, what's playing? Playing means playing music. But now playing is just playing. <laughs> and, and isn't that the greatest gift that children bring to us? They, they kind of remind us as adults of, of what playing really is. Yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing. And, and you can play with toys. Well, you don't even need toys. It's all imagination, really. It's 95% imagination. If someone were to go back and listen to your various albums that you've created, would they be able to get a picture of your life journey? Do you feel like your story comes through with each succeeding album? Well, I, I feel like my energy uh, of who I was at, at each of those junctures definitely comes through. Comes through, rather. Um since most of the albums, since the, the, well, since most of the songs on most of the albums are not in English, there isn't, um, you don't get a story of me through, through the years, you know. But um, you certainly get a feel for me. I, I, I listen to some of the old albums and I, I hear who I was at that moment. I hear the beauty of who I was at that moment. I hear the stuckness of who I was at that moment. Um, I hear the anguish, you know. Um, I love Shiva Station. I love Mandurama. I love those films a lot, and, and, and I can hear a lot of pain in them, though, you know. But it's, it's, with, with me, the music has always been a great re- relief. Oh, and music has always been the way for me to feel whole and to feel free is what Jayutal says. On another level, it's been a way for me to feel pain and to channel it. We are here today with Jayutal talking about his newest release, Thunder Love, which you can get at jayutal.com, J-A-I-U-T-T-A-L.com. Join us in just a few minutes and we will complete our story of Jayutal. Awakened Media for a Transforming World. Seventh Wave Network. Experience higher love, an archangelic journey into ascended joy and authentic living. Your hosts, Sri Ram Ka and Kira Ra, will assist you to open your heart, expand your love, and be ever present with true joy. Your journey with Sri and Kira begins right here on the Seventh Wave Network with Higher Love, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Listening on a higher dimension. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. 
You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Jai Utah credits his spouse, Nubia Zafira, and the subsequent birth of his son, Ezra Gopal, not only with fostering an emotional renaissance, but a musical one as well. With great clarity and love, Jai expressed knowledge of his true purpose being revealed in the time spent with his son. How is your music changing now that you have a son? Do you find yourself with the release of Thunder Love? Do you find yourself going in even further directions? Well, um, there's, a, there's a gentleness that has come into my music, and I think, I think it's since Ezra was born, um, a simplicity and a softness that, that, you, that you feel with kids. And... Um, uh, uh, what's the word? Like a non, a non hipness. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> you know, uh, just just a, a naivety, and, and particularly, particularly on the emotional level, where where just simple emotional uh, moods and simple feelings and simple um, expressions. Just so, suddenly they're okay. Not only are they okay, but but I but I find I'm in that place a lot. Uh, so that that's definitely coming into the music. It, whether my music is changing stylistically, well, I don't know. That's always seems to be always changing. I'm, I'm deeper, deeper, you know, every month deeper into the Brazilian world. So I'm not quite sure what my next thing is going to come out as. But this, but the same thing is that my performances are still, say, ninety percent pretty traditional kirtan um, these days with the harmonium and a tabla player. And so, for those listeners that are not familiar with Kirtan, would you explain, because I know you have an upcoming retreat that you're doing where people can really immerse themselves in depth in Kirtan, uh, which is happening in August. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about that so that those that are seeking such a, a time of, of um, oneness can know what to experience? Well, Kirtan, for someone who knows nothing about it, I guess, most simply put, it's it's a way of invoking God, invoking the Spirit, invoking Goddess. You could say through song, through group song, through um, uh, you know congregational singing. Although that sounds very Christian, but but through singing together, um, usually in a call and response way, but not always. And and we sing mantras from ancient ancient Indian times, and. Um, Sing them over and over and over again, but what people who are not familiar to this <laughs> don't realize is that you know kirtan it's sometimes very meditative for sure, but but a lot of times it's very free, it's very wild, rhythmic and dancing and um, and you know a great deal of energy and and I find with kirtan I in myself and from what other people tell me as well. It's such a, a clearing, an emotional clearing, because we sing sadness, we sing happiness, we sing anguish, we sing fear, we sing every non, uh, every emotion that we that we can't even label that's inside of us. We sing it out, we sing it out, and we sing it. And the mantras themselves are so powerful that that they just transmute it all into kind of a great spiritual energy. Absolutely, Kirtan is such a highly charged vibrational experience, and yeah. like you said, it is a, a great clearing because there are a lot of sacred chants that have been sung gazillions of times. Yeah, so gazillions of years. <laughs> <laughs> now, with the Thunder Love CD, you have been said that there is more trust that you had with yourself with that CD than any of your past CDs and that you felt more like you could go to that place of safety and uh, by, by tapping into your insecurities and your vulnerabilities than you ever have before. What allowed you to go that deeply? Well, I, I, I guess my, my life now, on a daily basis, despite my ridiculous moods that I get into and my, my ridiculous depressions that I get into, despite all that, my life shows me every day how embraced I am by the universe and, and by God and by my family and, and by, by life itself. And so that, that sense of safety 
that I, I'm, I'm constantly being reminded of. And believe me, I'm constantly needing that reminder because the negative conditionings, are, you know, they're still there and they're still resonating. And I wish they weren't, but they are. But everyday life shows me, hey, this is beautiful. You are loved. You are so loved. God loves you so much. Or else, this, or else you wouldn't have had this child. Or else you wouldn't have had this good health. Or else you wouldn't have had this wife. Of course, it could all disappear in a minute. But, but the 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 absolute evidence of of divine protection, guidance, guidance, and presence is so there that 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 I'm able, you know, at least a little bit able to put myself in scary positions and very, very vulnerable positions because what am I going to be afraid of? You know, I'm, I have fear, but what am I afraid of? Nothing. I'm af- I mean, that doesn't sound exactly right. I've, of course, I have a lot of fear inside of me, but I recognize that it's, it's just old waves, you know, that have no real solidity so I can move forward. And so music is, in a sense, kind of your courage pathway. It helps you to to step into those places and reveal those places and still embrace them as part of who you are. Music has always been everything because music is sometimes the most scary thing for me. I, I'm not a, I'm not one of these performers that gets on stage and feels like, whoopee, here I am, Jai Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a performer. Of, you know, I get stage fright, I'm very insecure. Very self-doubting, all that stuff. But without music, I mean, but music has always pushed me into that rather than um, hiding me away from it. You know what I mean? So, so music can sometimes stimulate the fears, but it always pushes me into a place of walking through them rather than running from them. And I appreciate that statement as well because so often people will allow their fear to paralyze them, but instead of letting your fears paralyze you, you dove into that gift and allowed it to be your safety shield. Yeah, yeah, because it's weird because the dichotomy is safe because when I am playing music, I also feel more safe, you know, than anything else. Well, nowadays I won't say that. I feel the most safe when I'm really just close with my family, there's an incredible, almost blissful feeling we have. But for most of my life, music was the, really the only real safety realm for me. So what's next on the high horizon for Jai Utah? We've just had this wonderful release of Thunder Love, and I know it's doing very well, and all my listeners are going to definitely go out and buy the CD. Oh, what's good. the next <laughs> step for you? Well, actually, the nice thing is that we have a quiet summer. I, I, I have a bunch of work, but it's, but it's all around home, so it's not traveling. Um, um, but the next big thing is the Kirkon camp, which, you know, every time we do it, it's kind of a really great and a big and a powerful event for me as well as everyone. And then when the fall comes, I, I, believe it or not, I think I, I, I'm getting ready to start a new album. And I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, but I'm feeling the, the rumblings and the, and the brewings and the internal readiness. Because, you know, even though Thunder Love has just been out for three months, um, it was done about a year before it was released. So, so there's been a lot of um, gestation of all that. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm ready to, sit, to take the plunge again. Making a record is always a plunge. So... So it's fun and exciting and scary. <laughs> and when you start to get those rumblings for a new album, is there just a sense of of something else that you have to say that wants to be sung, or do you start to hear tunes in in your heart, or exactly what happens? It, it's tunes, I guess you could say, as like songs, not not necessarily completed songs, but but these seeds of things that are popping up that say, "Wow, look at me," and and and. I feel really good, don't I? The song is saying that, you know. It just makes you feel really good. Let's let's explore this and let's share this and let's do it. Um, you know, it's kind of like that. And, and and there's all always also the sense of well, okay, Thunder Love left me with this sense of feeling, and I mean with this kind of an, a feeling, and 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 a couple of the doors that opened in Thunder Love. I feel like I just barely opened it, and i got to go through some of those doors a little deeper. 
you know, so so one of those is the, is that kind of. Oh, there we are. And I want to thank you, Jai Utah, for being on Eleven Eleven Talk Radio. We look forward to hearing more of your wonderful music, and I urge everyone to go to www.jaiuttal.com and order your copy of the Thunder Love CD. Next week, we will have Nick Good. I'm Simran Singh with 1111 Talk Radio, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you, Simran. Glory, glory, oh Lord Hanuman, ocean of compassion, breath of bomb, you bear the message of God's grace, you are the light that lights on the face. Saints and sages hold wrong, they're dear, but under your shelter, there's no fear. Who in the world doesn't know that your name is a ruler of suffering, a leader of pain? Thank you for stepping into the doorway of conscious choice with 1111 Talk Radio. Please join host Simran Singh again next Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for another enlightening edition here on the 7th Wave Network. Remember, shift happens. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the 7th Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit 7thWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.